Right, this morning we're talking about putting hydraulic lifts on the head of the sawmill. Uh, I was going to do more on dogs, but the parts came in from this and it seemed more interesting, so that's what we're doing this morning. So I've got the pistons installed. There's one on each side. And what these are is the, the hydraulic unit is a, for a dump car. They're not that expensive. I think about $300 on eBay and a couple of pistons. These are 24 inch stroke, 2 inch pistons. Uh, so we mounted a uh, superstructure, if you will, over the top to hold the, the bottom of the piston because the top's down at the bottom and the bottom's up to the top. And the reason for that is the dynamics of the cylinder, the, the rod takes up about half of the size of the cylinder so that it goes faster <coughs> going in than out. So I wanted it to lift faster than it went down, and it does. It's about twice as fast. So I'm going to finish hooking this rod up, and then I'll show you how it, uh, how it works. It actually works pretty good. And we'll go into some of the other things that have to be done. The cylinder's hooked up. Everything's ready to go. We have a, a uh, 22 horse V-twin motor to run this thing. I've got an inch and a half band on some 19 inch wheels. I made a tightener out of a uh, well, this was actually a hydraulic knockout kit that I, I stole this out of with a, just a little hydraulic cylinder up in here from Northern Hydraulics. It's like a one inch cylinder with a stroke of three inches, good for I think 10,000 pounds. So um, let's give this thing a try and see if it goes up and down. Of course I've already tried this, so I know it does. There's the down cycle. Twice as fast as it goes down, which is a good thing. Now, one problem you'll have with this type of hydraulic system, and it's inherent to all hydraulics where you use two cylinders, two or more, is the cylinder of the least resistance will go furthest. So, in order to get this to balance and come straight up and down, you have to have some kind of equalizer on it. What I'm using is a chain on each side with a uh, sprocket on top and an idler sprocket on bottom and hooked in the middle and I'll show that to you. It runs across to another shaft on the other side that does the same thing. Then I can I have adjustments so I can tweak this to exactly where I want it. That's what I'm working on this morning. I'll get this side done and I'll show that to you and then I'll show you where, what we're doing on the other side. So this is where the equalizer connects in where the piston is. Basically all I did was I extended the piston pin out and hooked and made a bracket for uh, the chain hook into each side with adjusters on it. This is a number 40 chain. It goes down around an idler in the bottom. You can see that here. Well you can't see it here. Now you can. See there's an idler in the bottom, the chain goes, which is hooked solid to the frame. Chain goes all the way up. To the top of the superstructure where it's bolted again solid to the frame. And there's a uh, shaft, a steel shaft runs across and there'll be another one of these on the other side exactly the same. Basically, the way I did this is I made what we would call puck sliders. I don't know if you can see them. We can take another look at them. But there, there's a uh, high-density plastic slide mounted to the frame, and then there's uh, Delrin, Delrin pucks, if you will, just round pieces of Delrin inside of here were adjustable by these bolts so that I can tighten, loosen, I can tip the saw forward and back, I can make, take any slop out of it in any direction. And these are just four inch C-channels welded to two by two by eight uh, square tubing. It's, it's heavy, but I want it heavy. Uh, when it comes to logs, the heavier, the better. So let's take another look at it from the other angle while I put these things together. Alright, this is the number 40 chain we're going to use for the equalizer. 
All we did was take a piece of half inch threaded rod, flatten it a bit on each side of the one end, drill a hole through it, and then use a connecting link for the number 40 chain to put it together. There's one on each end of the chain, so we can use it not only to uh, adjust, very fine tune the blade so it's perfectly straight across, goes up and down nice, but we can also adjust the tension so there's no give in the system. So I think this is going to work pretty good, but let's put it together and find out. So this is the chain idler for the bottom of the equalizer chain. All it is is a piece of angle iron with a uh, idler sprocket mounted to it. So I'm just going to cut it off, take about three quarters of an inch off so it'll fit nicely, and then I'm actually going to drill it on. I'd like to weld it, but I just got a feeling if I have to take it back off, it'd be a lot easier to take two bolts out than to uh, grind all the weld off. And sometimes when you got a feeling that you're going to need to do something, just go with the feeling because it's probably right. So here we go. I'm, I'm going to cut this off on the vertical bandsaw. And this is an old wood bandsaw that I uh, changed into a metal bandsaw. And I really like it because it has the wood slider, which gives me great accuracy. So I'll go ahead. I'm just going to set it on here. And I'm going to cut that off. Okay, I've cut off the two idler sprocket brackets. I've taken them over to the bridge port, drilled a couple of holes in each one so I can bolt it to the frame. I've rounded all the corners. I always round the corners because it's a hazard if you don't. Um, I drilled the holes exactly 0.56 inches from each side. Um, I don't know why I chose 0.56 inches, but it just looked good. So, uh, and to keep it consistent, I went ahead and did that. So I'm going to bolt these on and then we should be ready to try it. All right, I've got the blade tension to 1,000 PSI on the gauge. Uh, the puck sliders are adjusted. The uh, equalizer is adjusted. And right now, it's setting at 20 inches. And 20 inches within the 30 seconds of an inch. So if I go up and it comes back and I can set it at the same place, then I know it's accurate. So let's go up to the end. And now, try to get back to 20 inches. Or the other inches, it doesn't matter as long as the same. There's 20 inches. And there's 20 inches. So it's accurate. That's good. Always good to have a success in life. So there you have it. Obviously I have a lot of work left to do. I've got to mount the pump, I've got to mount the battery, I've got to figure out how to bring this out to the operator station. I've got some ideas on micro switches to make it limit its travel to automatically travel up and down. I really don't want to run a bunch of wiring on a pole out across here. I may have to do that, but what I'm hoping is that I can be clever and use micro switches that when it gets to the end it will automatically come back up, reset itself, slow down the motor, and then I return it and start over. So be watching for that. Sorry these are out of sequence, but kind of do what interests me. This interested me. So now I gotta get back to the other things. I'll talk to you later.